What's good dream team and welcome to today's video where I'm going to share with you the top five mistakes that new developers make when they are learning to code that will take your journey from looking like this to something like this. Not so good. Now I personally made all five of these mistakes when I was learning to code. Hopefully you haven't, but if you have, let me know how many in the comments down below so that I don't feel so bad about myself. Also, if you don't immediately like the video, Doug is going to curse you with bad websites for seven years. So no pressure. Alrighty, class is in session. And for this lesson, I have prepared a beautiful PowerPoint presentation. We're gonna have a throwback to high school for this video. And as I said in the intro, in this video we'll be discussing the five biggest mistakes people make when learning to code that will derail your whole journey starting off number one on the list we have the doom mentality here we have a sweet picture of a corgi that is a doomsayer now the question you might be asking is what is a doom mentality and essentially it's a mentality that can be adopted by either yourself or or the people around you that's just full of negativity it's the can't mindset i can't do this there's no point in doing that the market is saturated you'll fail ai is going to replace your jobs all of these negative outlooks that might discourage someone from pursuing a particular objective or goal. Now, why is a Duma mentality so bad? Basically, if you're trying to do something where there are naysayers, people saying it's impossible, it's likely you have a mighty great challenge ahead of you. Now, often the only way to get through these experiences is to have ridiculous levels of self-belief. And that's not going to happen when you're full of negativity. When I was learning to code, I was lucky that I avoided a lot of these Duma mentalities and it just meant that I could focus on my own journey and find out for myself if something was possible. And that's actually a solution I recommend to you. When you have an objective that you want to pursue, the first thing you absolutely need to do is if someone tells you you can't do it, find out for yourself. The other thing to remember about the doom mentality is that it's the average person that has the negative mindset. If you want to achieve something exceptional, then you have to be exceptional and you shouldn't listen to the average person telling you you can't do it. And the last thing that's absolutely critical is just like a doom mentality is infectious, it will seep into you and saturate your blood and your mind. So is the culture of success. Surround yourself in a community of people People that believe in trying something until it's proven to be literally impossible and even then we'll probably still give it a shot now number two on the list in a similar vein it's all about mindset is imposter syndrome here we have a beautiful little animal that's just feeling a bit uncertain about itself it's surrounded by pairs where it sees every other corgi as more exceptional than itself now the main thing to know about imposter syndrome is that it actually happens in every facet of life it's just more generally referred to as comparison now if you didn't know this amazing quote comparison is the thief of joy then you should and while it's good to look at other people and even learn from others comparison is toxic every minute that you spend looking outwards and seeing what everyone else has that you potentially might not is a minute that you have been unable to look inwards and be grateful for the things you have achieved and be proud of your unique pathway, your unique goals and your unique achievements. I'll tell you right now that you will never be the best coder in the room. I will not be the best coder in the room and fighting that is just going to be an uphill battle that you will never win. But the thing you have to realize is that coding is not the only thing that matters in life. Coding is actually a means to an end. We want to work to live. We don't live to work. Most of us don't live to be the best programmer. Instead, you're so much better to say, who cares? I'd much rather be funny, develop your soft skills, build your personality, be a nice person. And remember that in a workplace, when you're around coders, that it's so much better to be the person that can celebrate the brilliance of somebody else than to be necessarily the best coder in the room. Likewise, if you're in a workplace and you want to be a good colleague, then you want to be supportive, friendly, and fun to be around. And if you want to be a good employee, then you want to be receptive, diligent, ready to learn, open-minded, and meet the requirements of your contract, which almost certainly does not say to be the best coder in the room. Next up on the list is SMART goals. A lot of people extinguish their journey to learn to code because they do not set smart goals now the unfortunate reality of the internet is that there's a million people out there a million resources telling you what you should do to learn to code and a lot of people will overwhelm themselves by saying all right i'm going to do all of these simultaneously i have a bajillion things to do if i want to reach my destination and i can tell you right now that that kind of mindset will absolutely smoke you in the dust you will be left out to dry if you have too many expectations upon yourself you will be overwhelmed if you try to manage a thousand concurrent tasks, you will be overwhelmed. So instead, what we have to do is set smart objectives. And basically the way this works is we take our current position, we find the outcome that we're looking for. For a lot of us, probably getting a job as a software developer. 
We make a roadmap of steps, compartmentalized steps that will take us from point A to point B. Then all we do is we take each step one at a time. We focus on completing that one step and we don't look anywhere else. It's so much easier to manage that one thing in your mind and trust that you have a roadmap there to support you and direct your journey. So you're not just wandering randomly throughout the universe and then focus on one thing at a time, one day at a time, 1% at a time, and you will reach your destination in absolutely no time. Not to mention that it will also happen infinitely faster than if you focus on trying to do a thousand things at the same time. So to pick a roadmap, I'd recommend my one. Link is in the description down below, but there's loads on the internet. Follow it step at a time and forget everything else and you will not get overwhelmed. Now, I say that you won't get overwhelmed. You can also be overwhelmed by the amount of knowledge that people expect you to know. And in a lot of ways, this is actually a misconception. There's this notion that learning to code by yourself is an exceptional thing and you have to be exceptional to be able to do it. And because people think it's so exceptionally hard, there's also exceptional expectations that people place upon themselves to be able to do it. And so I get a lot of messages from people saying, oh, I need to know C Sharp, C, Python, JavaScript, JavaScript frameworks, data science, DevOps, backend development, databases, testing frameworks, the list goes on. People think that they need to know absolutely everything just to get into the coding realm. There's actually not that much that you need to know to get a job as a software developer. The main reason a lot of people fail is because they try to do everything and then they don't even accomplish the bare minimum, which they could actually do if they just forgot everything else. You have to remember that you have 40 years of work experience to learn everything. All we're trying to do is actually break into the industry, which doesn't have that stringent of a requirement. Now, the second misconception is that people think that when they pick this starting place, it's going to cement their pathway and they're never going to be able to pivot and change. This means that you get hit with the paralysis of choice where you have so many options to choose from that you fail to pick one and get started in the first place. And once again, this kind of speaks to the idea that careers are very malleable, they're flexible, you can change direction at any moment. Likewise, when you're learning to code, you just wanna pick something and get started. I recommend HTML and CSS, you could learn Python, you could learn JavaScript, Likewise, if you wanted to get into Web3, cryptocurrency, backend development, you can try something, see how you feel about it, and then pick to learn something else immediately afterwards. Equally, you could work as a full stack developer for two years, then you could get a job as a data scientist for a few years. It's very flexible. And so all you want to do is pick something that interests you and just start there. Don't worry about whether or not that's going to be the ultimate direction that you need to take to be the most successful developer. Just pick something and start and change as you go. That way you can start today, you can be patient, but at least you're doing something from day one. Now, the last mistake that a lot of people make is that they don't have the bell notice turned on for the channel. How are you gonna learn everything you need to know if you keep missing my new videos? So be sure to smash the bell notifications and if you haven't subscribed, hit the subscribe button, be super appreciated, love that support. Learning to code? If so, be sure to check out the learn to code roadmap or dive straight in with these videos. That's a good one.